Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in all of the mod six to the sky with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we started on the All of the Cobble Gens quest by crafting ourselves a tier one cobble gen. I've got that running in the background here, just, you know, generating some cobblestone for us so we can go and make ourselves some more gravel that we can run through our sifters that we can get some more ores. Now, those resources that we get from those sifters, we're going to want to run them through a smeltery. That is going to allow us to ore double up all of those ores and, you know, basically maximize the output that we get you know from our sifters we have previously done something similar with the melter the melter only gives us the 1.3 or the one ingot and three nuggets or we could do it through a regular furnace which is you know basically only gets us the one uh ingot so this is the least efficient but is the simplest to make the melter is fairly easy to make but it gives us sort of an awkward number the smell tree is what we're you know really really aiming for so that is what we're going to build this episode to build a smell tree, we are first going to need a bunch of seared bricks. You can see I've got a bunch laid out here already. We've done this one back when we were doing the melter. But as a reminder, to make some seared bricks, you are first going to need some grout. To make grout, it is simply a block of clay, four blocks of sand, four blocks of gravel in a crafting station gets you eight grout. There is an alternate recipe for this. If you use one ball of clay, you can get away with one sand and one gravel. That only makes two grout. The amount of resources is the exact same though. So if you've got the block, you might as well use that. Otherwise, if you're only making a couple, you know, the, the ball of clay works just fine. But we're going to take that grout out of the crafting table. We're going to go pop it into a furnace. And once this runs through, we'll end up getting ourselves some seared bricks. Now, the first thing that every smeltery is going to need is a smeltery controller. Now, I don't know if this recipe is unique to all of the mod six to the sky, or if it is the 1.16 uh, version of Tinkers, but to make a controller, we got to jump through a couple of hoops. First off, we are going to need to make ourselves a seared heater. To make a seared heater is simply eight seared bricks in a crafting station in that chest pattern. We are now going to have to take this seared heater and go and place it into a casting basin. And then we're going to have to pour, pour four ingots worth of molten copper over top of that uh, seared heater. This is the reason that we went with the seared melter first, rather than jump right into making ourselves a smeltery. We needed a source of molten uh, metal in our world. So we have already got some copper ore pieces. We've gotten those from sifting with a flint mesh, though an iron and a diamond and an emerald will end up getting you quite a bit more of that. But if we take four of those copper pieces in a two by two crafting area, we end up with copper ore chunks. Now, like I said before, we're going to need four ingots worth. This melter does technically 1.33 ingots worth of material per chunk. So if we take three copper chunks, we're going to end up with four ingots. That is because it is one ingot plus three nuggets. Three nuggets plus three nuggets plus three nuggets gets us nine nuggets, which is technically another ingot. So there you go. You can see we've got four ingots. We're going to go pour that over the seared heater. And as soon as it's done, it's going to pop into my chest down here. There we go. Seared controller brain of the smeltery. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, we're also going to need a heat source for this smelter. Very, very similar to how we did the seared melter. We're going to use a seared tank and we're going to fill that tank with lava. To make a seared tank, it is a piece of glass surrounded by seared bricks. We are also going to need a block to allow us to pull uh, molten liquids out of our smelter. Unlike the seared melter, we cannot just use a faucet right up against it. We've got to build ourselves a drain. To build a drain, we're going to need seared bricks, and we're actually also going to need some more molten uh, copper. So again, we're going to take three more of those copper chunks. We're going to go throw them into our melter here. So we're going to need a total of six uh, to do this, though, if we wanted more drains, we could actually use the other two here for that. But we're also going to need these in ingots. We're not going to need to cast them onto something. So if we go pour this molten copper out, we're going to end up with four ingots worth of copper. Now, for demonstrations purposes only, I'm just going to take two of these copper ingots. Chances are you're going to want more than one drain in your uh, smelter. But for now, we're just going to go take two of those. We're going to put them in a crafting station with four seared bricks. That gets us our seared drain. 
Now we're also gonna need a way to get the liquids out of the drain into our casting table or our casting basin. Once again, we're gonna need some seared faucets. To make a seared faucet, it is simply three seared bricks in that small V pattern that gets us two seared faucets. Now that is everything we need for the backbone of our smeltery, but smelteries are big, especially compared to the melter. We're gonna need a lot of blocks to fill that in. So there are two main ways of getting building blocks for our smelter. One of which is we can take four seared bricks in a crafting table and that will get us a seared bricks block. Or what we can do is we can take regular blocks from our world. We can take like things like the cobble, the stone, the stone bricks, and we can go throw them into that casting basin. And then we can go fill this up with molten clay. Molten clay on stone makes seared bricks in this version. So this is another way of doing it. It's actually very, very simple, very, very easy to do. But as soon as that's done, you can see we've got a seared cobblestone. We can do the same thing with the stone. And you see, there we go. We've got ourselves a seared stone. And then we can use the stone bricks and do the exact same thing. I've actually previously done a whole bunch of these because I knew we were going to need a whole bunch. So I've got 30 there. Actually, I've got 31, 32 of them. Actually, that's going to be more than I need. So to build this smelter, we're going to need a much larger space than we do for the melter. I'm going to go clean up this area and then I'm going to be right back. Okay, so here we go. We've got a nice cleaned out space. I'm just going to do a relatively small smelter for now, but every smelter needs a floor. So I'm going to do a three by three square just in the bottom of my world there. This is the measurable space of the inside of the smelter. I This is not the smallest we can make. I think we can actually make it just one deep, but it's certainly not the biggest we can make either. From here though, we can make ourselves some walls. We do not have to fill in the edges of the square. All that's really important is the inside. So if we go and throw these around like this and leave the bottom corners open, this is a perfectly legitimate smelter. We can now go take our controller. Let's put our sear tank in the middle, and then we're gonna put our sear drain on the edge. And you can see our controller has now lit up. Our sear drains have now opened. This is indicating that this is a totally valid uh, configuration. If one of these things was not correct, this would not light up. It's very, very similar to the melter. Once you've got your melter on top of a proper heat source, even if that heat source is not full, it will light up to show you that you've, you've got it set. You, you've, everything is you know working properly. What we can do is we can open up this smelter. We can see that because we've got nine spaces on the inside, we have nine spaces here on the outside that we can use to fill with ores. If we want to increase that space, all we've got to do is increase the size of our smelter. We open that up and we now have 18 slots in there. We can make this quite a bit taller, get more, more and more in, uh, liquids in there. I'm not gonna bother for this episode. This is just the basics of how to set this up. But before we can smell any material in here, we need a proper heat source. So let's go grab two buckets of lava from our lava manufactory over here. We're gonna go one, two, open this up. We can now see there are two buckets of lava in here. We can automate this as well, and I will be doing that sometime in the future, but for now, we're keeping this very, very simple. So what I've got is some iron ore here. We got five chunks of that, and then we got some gold ore as well. We got some two chunks. So if I go, I can go throw those five iron ore in here. Actually, let's just do one for the moment. The whole point of doing the smeltery is to get us that ore doubling. So one iron ore chunk will get us two iron ingots. That's absolutely perfect. That's exactly what we want. Let's throw the rest of that iron in there. While I am thinking about it, I can put my, you know, faucets here. I can cut some holes in my floor, you know, put my tables on top of this. This will work in this position. It's kind of awkward though. So let's go break this. You see all that liquid's kind of disappeared there. Don't worry about that. It's not broken. We can go throw that up there. You can see it's still not working. We'll put that block there. It's now working again. Open it up. Haven't lost that liquid and that all that new stuff went in there right away. We can now take our faucets, throw them up there, and tell you what, let's grab our cast and our table went into our there. I will automate this using the hoppers here, you know, a little bit after, or a little bit later. Put the casting table down, put the, the uh, cast on there, we go pour that. 
We have now got a fully functioning smell tree. This is absolutely perfect. We can go put our casting base in here, do a full ingots worth. How much have we got? We got one block here, which is perfect. Before I cast that though, the benefits of using a smeltery over a melter is that you can have multiple different ores in the smelter at the same time. The one thing you got to be careful of is certain ores will alloy together into something new. So if you don't want a particular alloy, be careful what you're running through your smelter at any one time. But the best benefit of it is you can have so much more liquid in here and you can be melting so many more things at a time than you can with the melter. So the melter is very, very controlled one material at a time. The smelter is less controlled, but you can do a lot more at the same time. So it's a little bit of a trade-off depending on what you're trying to do and you know what materials you're, you're trying to, to run at the same time. But if we open that up, you can see we've got one block of uh, molten iron and we've got four ingots of molten gold. Let's say I've got a bunch of iron in here though, and I want to get to that gold right away because I need gold more than I need iron at that moment. Rather than empty out all the iron, I can go right or left click on the gold. It's now bumped down to the bottom. We can go and pour that uh, gold there. There's that gold ingot. Let's go back, get our iron, get that out. We can go pour that as well. So that is how you run a smell tree. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys found it uh, useful. We will be using the smell tree to or double up our ores, which is going to help us with our sifting, which is going to get us up to that diamond and that emerald um, uh, meshes much, much quicker. So if you did enjoy this video, though, please think about leaving a like and a subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Jackal Wolf. Also, check out the description below. There will be a link to my Discord page. I would love it if you guys stop by to say hi. As well, there will be a link to my Patreon page. If you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content you want to support, stop by, check it out. There are a lot of great perks for all of my supporters. Also, I've been adding to my merch store. Check out the links below. There is a link there for the Redbubble and the Teespring uh, merch stores. I've been putting a bunch of character art up on there as, long, a couple of, as well as a couple of other things. Also, I have been streaming on Twitch, JackalWolf77. I stream Tuesday nights, Friday nights, and Saturday nights, 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So if you're looking for a chance to chat with me, that is a great opportunity to do that. But that is it. I'll see you guys next time. Good bye.